So this is going to be a little bit different. So unlike the last video where it was more of a direct lore of uh, the history of House Rhetorin, this is going to be talking a little bit more about what happens to this house. So uh, I, I want to do a little bit more of a format change where rather than me discussing the history of this specific house, I want to discuss how what will inevitably happen to each house. So that's what's going to happen from here on out. So today, we're going to be talking about the fall of House Halalu. Now, originally, of one of the five prominent, prominent houses of Morrowind, House Halalu established itself out of Narsis, and their power was limited, with only a port town of Sedanin in Vardenfell, and the towns of Saran, Hala'od, and Narmok under their influence. However, how Salalu maneuvered, adapted, and explored new ways to grow their authority. They began expanding its economical base and soon provided services across Morrowind, and this seeded its influence due to their opportunistic ways throughout the whole province. Now, their whole history up until the first and you know, even at the, up until the first and second era is relatively minor. Their their influence was minor. Everything they had was relatively small and their power doesn't really come until that of the third era. And by the third era, the city of Balmora finally transitioned from Rhetoran control to Halalu control. And this was after years upon years, even centuries of Halalu industrial, architectural, cultural, and economic expansion in the city. And soon, Hulalu became known for their fast-talking nature and known as intelligent traders as well. However, with power and, you know, responsibility comes corruption, and soon many retainers and leaders became bribable with golden favors, and even began exploring new ways of profiting through thievery, lockpicking, blackmailing, and assassinations. Yet, their adept trading skills did give them something of a better quality when it comes to them being friendly with other races outside of Morrowind, which kind of contrasted some of the other houses which were typically xenophobic in nature. Although there were cracks at the base of Halalu's power structure, it was their ability to adapt and jump at the opportunities of power that allowed them to reach the heights they did, and this came with the Septim invasion of Morrowind. Seeing the ever-imposing might of the Legion, Halalu opted to join the Empire, which contrasted all of Morrowind. Talbani remained neutral, while Redoran, Indoril, and Dress opted to fight a resistance against them. However, Morrowind would eventually capitulate, with Vivek's armistice and Redoran backing out of the resistance. And yet, the Lord High Counselor of Morrowind and of House Indoril refused the armistice and was soon then assassinated, which also led to the pro-imperial Halalu Noble being installed as the new Lord Counselor. But it didn't stop there. The figurehead role of Sovereign of Morrowind was also replaced by House Halalu, first with Queen Berenziah and then her uncle King Athane Lathan and then Prince Halseth. And then, even in 414 of the Third Era, Halalu would stake its claim to the best parts of Vardenfell, with the fertile parts of the Ascadian Isles and the ebony-rich mines in Caldera. And then near the end of the Third Era, the Halalu noble Vadam Dren was made Duke of the Imperial District of Vardenfell, thus marking the peak of Halalu power in Morwin's history. But with already a somewhat corrupted base, like I said earlier, with great power and responsibility comes a lot of corruption, and soon House Halalu got involved into smuggling and slave trade, which kind of contrasted their way of life because they were openly against slavery, and that was one of the things that drew the Empire to them in the first place. And then, they also held ties with the Kimona Tong, which were a hated group within all of Morrowind, and this came with Dren's brother, Orvas, who served as the Kimona Tong's kingpin. Now while Vadam disapproved of this, he could do relatively nothing, as Orvas had bought out two of Lalu's counselors, thus making it impossible to do anything. 
And yet, a lot of this went relatively unknown, because many of Halalu's uncorrupted figures remained unaware of this connection due to their own connection to the East Empire Trading Company, because any illegal profits or illegal doings were forged as illegal profits with trade between the two. And now I'm not saying that the East Empire Company was directly involved, we don't know that. I'm just saying that many of these members of House Halalu concluded that the profits were coming from the trade, so they never went any further into any of the probably more sketchy uh, sources of making money. Now, what solidified their downfall would come in 433 of the Third Era, which is the Oblivion Crisis, and the Dunmer were left virtually defenseless. Now, while House Talvani managed to close a few of the portals, and House Redoran successfully right, raising an army and then defending and defeating the hordes of the Daedra, I, I, meant, I don't know why I said defending, I meant to say defeating, so just go with it. Uh, without the Empire, Halalu relatively remained helpless and inactive, which ki is kind of funny because they were known to kind of jump at these opportunities of gaining power and wealth. I don't know if it was because their inability to break away from the Empire, or some loyalty to the Empire, but this would carry on into the year 5 of the 4th era, when the Red Year destroyed Vardenfell and the Argonians invaded the south. Again, Halalu remained quiet, and they quickly became the scapegoat to the Dunmer suffering, and with Redoran assuming indirect authority on Morwind, House Halalu was unceremoniously stripped of its power, status of a great as a great house, and their influence. And since then, they've attempted to regain small bits of ground, but have failed, with both their coups on Solstheim proving unsuccessful. Now, this all comes with a bit of irony, because... How Salalu was known for their ability to jump at opportunities and being very adaptable and maneuverable, and yet it was this inactivity that led to their downfall, and this contrasted their nature. And whether it was the corruption became too much, and the counselors and retainers were just too selfish and were unwilling to do anything about the suffering of everyone else but themselves, or whether or not it was just simple loyalty to the Empire that led them to be inactive because they thought the Empire would come and get them, it, it proved all fruitless. Despite all of their connections, all their gold, all their power and authority, it was their own inaction that led to their collapse. They didn't need to necessarily rely on the Empire to come save them during all of this. They could have done what Redoran did and raised an army, but they didn't. And this led them to become a scapegoat because they simply did nothing. And now they have lost their status as a great house, which was replaced by House Sadrus. And we don't know if House Halalu will ever make a comeback. Maybe in the next Elder Scrolls? We don't know. But regardless of which, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you kind of like this new style of format when it comes to these videos, please let me know and I will do it for the next. Well, I'm going to do it for the next three houses, so let that come. Maybe four. I don't know if I should do House Sadrus because there's not a lot of information known on them. But regardless of which, we'll see what I can find. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and as always, please give this a like if you enjoyed, and please subscribe if you want more content like this every week. I do Elder Scrolls Lore every week, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace. If you enjoyed, please like this video because it really lets me know you're enjoying this content. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The links are right here for you to click on, and the Discord chat link is right here as well. And overall, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.